Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We're going to go ahead and get ready to get started because uh, they got you got choir rehearsal, right, now, Jennifer? They got they got choir rehearsal tonight, the, the comeback choir, the, the voices of Beulah rehearsing tonight for the first time. So I do want to be real timely tonight and be able to get them out on time. So we will make sure we get out of here uh, right at a couple of minutes before 7 o'clock. So they can uh, so they can go ahead and and rehearse. Thank you all again for coming. Uh, ain't no rain gonna keep these beautiful nights away. <laughs> no, no, we ain't we ain't worried about no weather. Y'all y'all been everywhere else today, hadn't you? <laughs> In the rain, been to work, and now everywhere else. All right, that's good. Thank all those who are watching. We on we on the air, Mike? We know what you got us on? You sure we on? <laughs> they say we on the air, so let me say hello to all those that's watching us, those on Facebook, and those and those on YouTube. Thank you again for all those who are watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. In the upcoming weeks, in the upcoming weeks, we're going to Hey, Linda. In the upcoming weeks, we're going to uh, Benita Gill. We're going to be having our, we're going to be breaking out. We're going to have our children's uh, Bible study on Wednesday night also, like we did prior to the pandemic. We will be we are getting some people together to be doing it with our kids. And so when you bring your kids again on, on Wednesday night, just like we do on Sunday, and for those who are watching us, we do have a uh, children's church every Sunday, at, at 10 o'clock every Sunday. And they're really learning a lot of things uh, in those classes. The teachers are giving them assignments to take home and bring back. So if you want your kid to grow up in a, a wholesome spiritual uh, environment, please bring them on Sunday at 10 o'clock. And again, we have some great teachers uh, who are really teaching our kids and learning them some biblical principles and about Bible characters. And if they can learn all this other stuff, we want them to learn about the Lord. So again, for all those who are watching, if you got uh, if you, you if you got some kids, and again you want to bring them, bring them here, then we want you to bring your kids here on on Sunday at ten o'clock for our children's our children's church. And also again, probably within the next month, we'll be doing it here on Wednesday night. We'll be doing the same thing uh, with our kids. And Benita, I'll be getting with you and Charmaine and a few other people, Val, and we'll make sure we get some people that's lined up who are, we rotated out. It won't be bad for no one. And so that's what we're going to do and have a place where our kids can go and they can also learn to uh, argue as we do uh, on Sunday. So, again, that's forthcoming. So, again, we look forward to that. I'm so glad to have Kara and Renee back with us. Yeah, yeah, Sheila Bush, y'all. Glad to have y'all. Less I'm glad they're back with us uh, again here on Wednesday. They've been gone on vacation. Again, let's see. Y'all ready to get started? I had a couple of more announcements. Again, if you're still interested in the choir, if you're interested in the choir, even tonight, y'all can see Jennifer tonight. Still not too late. If you want to uh, sing with the voices, the voices of Beulah, uh, you can still you can still do that. I see. Uh, Evelyn and uh, Annette Perry coming in. Evelyn and Annette, I mentioned, I mentioned, Evelyn and Annette did our um, Bible study on Wednesday night for our kids. I told them Evelyn and Annette, we're in the process of trying to get a team back together again for our Wednesday night class, again, our Bible class. And I'll be talking to both of you all. We got some other volunteers who agreed to work with us on Wednesday night for our kids. So thank both of you all, our superintendent and Evelyn, who's always working all departments for us. Larry Simmons told me to let everybody know he had a birthday. So happy birthday, Larry Simmons. <laughs> Larry told me he thought we had a book we pulled the names out of. I said, man, we ain't got no book we pulled no names out of. <laughs> so happy, happy birthday, Larry. He, we, Larry's our good, our good, good, good and faithful friend. Remember on July 23rd, we have our deacon ordination, uh, Nathan Bond. Him and, it's for him and his wife, Stephanie. So again, on, on July 23rd, yeah, July 23rd, please come out with your, it's going to be about an hour from 
11 to 12, but we do want to uh, go ahead and ordain Nathan. And again, we're so proud of him and proud of his wife, Stephanie, and all what they do uh, for the love of God. But me and Nathan, that's, that's just in two weeks from now, uh, on July the uh, 23rd at 11 at 11 o'clock. Okay? All right, what we got tonight, Jin Jin? All right, Ellis, you on? It's all right.
I like that. <laughs> One more time for Alex. I like that. She sung that, didn't she? Yeah. In beat, too. She can rock and sing. I hate to tell y'all, some of y'all be up there. <laughs> Your song going one way, you're rocking up. <laughs> you got to know how to rock and sing. <laughs> good job, Alex. Good job. Sounds good. All right, and good. What a wonderful crowd again we have out here. For those who are watching us, uh, at home and all, all over, we got a wonderful crowd here on a somewhat dreary, and it, had, it was raining real hard a few minutes ago here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, but it's all good because it's, we need the rain. We need the rain, so we ain't gonna complain about no rain. The Lord know what, what he's doing when he's sending that rain. Bitterness, we're gonna continue tonight on our series on bitterness, and there are some times when I do lessons and I hear more comments than others, and this has been one of those subjects that I got so many comments and calls about this subject about bitterness and how, and I was real transparent on last week, how it affects all of us. All of us and some people right now going through that. There are some people right here who's sitting among us. There are some people watching right now. There are some things you need to let go of and you had not let go of it. You got, to, you got to let it G-O. You holding on. They have some husbands here, got some bitterness against their wives. Some wives here. Got some bitterness. What you say? That's right, Rhoda. Where your husband at? Don't be waving up that Jane right now. Where James at? <laughs> James? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Girl, you've been married too long for that, baby. <laughs> hey, Sharon. Hey, my niece, Sharon, here. Yeah, and let me do announce that Sharon remind me the passing of Sister Juanita Simpson, and her funeral will be uh, this coming this coming Monday at 12 noon at Weeping Mary Baptist Church. And again, we want to continue to uplift and keep uh, that family and sharing all in our prayers. We want we want to do that. But bitterness, there's a lot of things people got to let go of. And as I mentioned, we got spouses still bitter against each other. You bitter against people you knew long time ago, and. And uh, you got people in the church. There are some people not coming to church right now because you bitter about something that happened 20, 40, and 50 years ago. And them folks you was mad that they dead and gone, or they not even think about you no more. But you won't come. You ain't coming to church. They made you move off that pew that your name was on. Know that pew with your name on? <laughs> made you move off that pew. But we got to we got to we got to let some of this stuff we got to let some of this stuff go. We talked about how it's a feeling of anger, or disagreeable, disagreeable disagreement towards something or someone, something you just can't get along with, something you don't understand, something you get mad about. And one thing we said is that when you don't resolve it, bitterness is a slippery slope. It's a sliding scale. It goes from it goes from you being bitter to resentment and then to anger. And then a lot of people act upon their feelings. Act upon those that, that angerness. They act upon those that resentment. And that's when you get to a point where we say it's boiling over, you can't take it no more. You know, I'm gonna just let you have it. All of us have had something that we and someone we've had some resentment for, all of us. At some point in our life, every last one of us have had somebody, and we're talking about people right now, somebody who you just can't stand. And some of you still feel that right there. You just can't stand them. You resent them. 
And every time you see them, it does something to you. Every time you see them, it does something to you. Every time. It does something. Set you off. But as Christian, and as part of Christianity, we have to have a heart. We got to have a heart and spirit to forgive others. I mentioned it last week, you don't have a choice. If you don't forgive, you're going to die and go to hell. I'm going to say it again. If you don't forgive, you're going to die and you're going to hell. And, and, and the question is, is it worth that? Is it worth losing your soul over because you won't forgive? You just won't forgive. I think it was Booker T. Washington said, I'll let no man take my soul to hell. It ain't, it ain't worth that. And I often say this, I learned this from Pastor Long, you can't control how folks feel about you but you can control how you feel about other folks. You, you got control over that. You got control over your own feelings and over your own emotions. Whereas bitterness, resentment, all of these, all of these things will rob you Rob you of this thing we call joy. You can be in the very best of moods, and when that person walks in a room, even in your own household, we're going to talk about that later on over the, whether the day or uh, next week about households. And, and there are people who are jealous of each other. You got husband jealous of wives, and wives jealous of husband. Yeah, you have that. Uh, significant others, you dating somebody, he jealous of you, and you de you jealous of him. Yeah, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna talk about all that. So bitterness will rob you, and there's nothing worse than a sad Christian who has no joy. Who have no joy. And when you don't have joy, don't nothing, ain't nothing right. I don't care how hard Letitia sing, you don't feel nothing. I don't care how hard I preach, you don't feel nothing. You just don't have it. Can't nothing make you happy. Nothing. You've been robbed of your joy. We'll come to church and sit up here. And they be sitting on one side and you sitting on the other side. And you won't hear nothing being said. No song being sung. You just sitting there. You just sitting there. On the job. You can't concentrate on your job Because of the person that's there, and you bitter. Messing up. You about to get fired. <laughs> yeah. Mary Short, a lot of folks that got fired off their job. Oh, they fight on the job all the time. Y'all know folks down there fight in all these plants around here and all these other places. <laughs> they bitter and mad. <laughs> you lose your job. And then when you get real mad, you get to, I don't care. What. <laughs> I, I, had, I, I had countless of people get mad and on the job, I over and throw their keys and walk out. Like, I'll show you something. 
But in the midnight hour, when you go, when you go to that, that mailbox and them be up pop out there. Then you bit at the mailman. <laughs> I heard folks have tired of the mailman bringing me all these bills. You mad? You mad at the mailman? <laughs> Don't shoot the, the, the messenger. <laughs> but it'll rob you. And it's robbing people. It robs people of their joy. Read the story of David, as I mentioned last week. Read what David said, how it robbed him of his joy. And as a Christian, I can't give you your joy back. Nobody, your mama can't give it to you, your husband, your wife, Dr. Bobo, can't nobody give you your joy but one person. This joy that I have, I can't give it back to you. Only the Lord can give you back your joy. And the, re and the way David got healed back, David had to repent with that repentance prayer. And ask the Lord to restore. So it has robbed you of your joy. When you are bitter toward other people, you are the one that's held captive. You are the one. When, when you are bitter toward other people, you are the one. You the one in prison. They got you. You are the one. You, you, you think you're getting back at them and I show them, but you are the one. So many times, folks don't even know you bitter at them. Or they think it's all over with. But you are the one. You're the one that is affecting. You're the one that's hurting. You're in prison. You're in jail. You're locked up. Because of how you feel. So much bitterness, so much resentment, so much hatefulness. You the one. And we replay that over and over and over in our mind. It's like a movie. It's, it's recircling. Every time you see you think about it. What they've done over and over and over. Over. All of us. I mentioned last week how I was. And Reverend Mott was with me. You was with me that day when we were at that, at that workshop together. And that person in the class I was saying it last week. Over and over. Every time I seen her. Until I let it go. Just let it go. And when you let it go, you feel so good. You feel so good. I ain't going to have all that on me. The Bible speaks to not letting the sun go down with all that in your heart. Your spouse is at home. You ought never go to bed mad and angry at each other. Uh, leaving home and stuff. You don't never know when it's the last time. <laughs> and that will haunt you. So I always try to at least make up. It's fun to make up, y'all. <laughs> Rhoda, you got a lot to talk about tonight over here. <laughs> oh. Cheryl, I don't know what's going on with Rhoda. <laughs> Jane, man, your wife, she on, what that song, that girl on fire. <laughs> oh, 
over and over and over and over and over. Over and over, we replay that in our mind. Our mind, our mind, our mind, our mind. Can't get it out of our mind. But all bitterness is a slow poison. You're taking a little poison every day. It's a slow poison. A slow poison. And if you don't soon get an antidote for it, and an antidote is a solution for it, it's going to kill you. And it can kill you so many different ways. It steals your joy. It holds you captive. And it's a slow poison. Slow poison. So it's like a faucet that's dripping. Drip, drip, drip. A slow poison. And at some point, at some point, even in our marriages, even in our relationships, even on the job, if you don't resolve it and you keep taking that poison, at some point, it's going to cake up with you. It's going to catch up with you. You're going to do something, say something, or make them do something, or make them say something. But it's going to take its toll on you. It's going to take its toll. I don't know if you all can see this. You can't see it. I, I did a screenshot. I did a screenshot. Some of you are familiar with what happened with the ex-Japanese prime minister. If you are, for those who may not know, uh, last week a uh, young man, uh, another uh, Japanese, shot the ex-prime minister and killed him with a handmade gun. Well, what the bottom of the caption says that the reason the boy did it, he was mad at the prime minister's granddaddy. Some his granddaddy had did, and that's what that's what the caption say. Suspect targeted. Abu Abay, due to his grandfathers, he was mad on some of his grandfather. Bitterness. Won't let it go. He killed a man because of something the man grandfather he thought had did. People are like that today. We mad at other people who are nice to you, but you looking at what they family, what they wear, I remember what they did to my family. Some his granddaddy did. You gotta let it go. He killed a man. Bitterness, a sliding scale. Bitterness, resentment, anger, then you act on it. It takes its toll on you day in, day out. You sit and you're consumed by it. It eats you up. It's a poison. It's a cancer. And all you had to do was let it go. At some point, you got to let it go. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. You like to got to let it go for your own good. And if you ever going to plan on making it into heaven, you got to. There's no way you going to walk around in heaven all day. There's no way you can love a God who you have never seen. And you got so much bitter and resentment and hatred against your own brother. That ain't going to work. 
And if, and if all of us here tonight, if we don't plan on going to heaven, something's wrong. We all have a, a goal, and that goal is to someday make it into heaven. And I often say you ain't got to wait till that day when the heaven blazes over with fire. And all. No, 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 no. Every day is somebody's judgment day. Every day is your judgment day. So that's our goal. And you got to love those that hate you. That's a commandment. You got to love, not like, not put up with, but you got to love those who hate you. And it was a commandment because it's hard to do. It ain't easy. But you got to do it. Love them. The one that's hungry, give them something to eat. The one that's thirsty, give them something to drink. If he's naked, give him clothes. For in so doing, you heaping coals of fire. You just burning them up. So you got to. You got to let it go. Because, because, I'll give you an example of what David said. There's a story in the Bible about David, and we know the story of David and his love for Jonathan. And we know how Jonathan's father, Saul, treated David. He hated David. He tried to kill him every opportunity he had. He chased him from year in into year out, trying to kill him. But he had made an agreement with his son, Jonathan. And Jonathan had told him, when everything ever happened to me, please, David, just remember the household the household of Saul. And after David had been king, he remembered his agreement. So, it say, so David said, is there yet anybody that's left of the household of Saul that I may show him some kindness for his daddy Jonathan's sake? was a little crippled boy named Meshubafel. He lived way down in a place called Lodabar. Lodabar means nowhere. He was nothing, living in nothing. But David was looking for him. And Meshubafel's granddad had been hateful and mean to him. Now when Meshubafel the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David. David found him. But the boy fell on his face and gave reverence to David. And David said, Meshiba felt. He answered and said, Behold thy servant. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou should look upon such a dead dog? Meshubafel thought that David was going to kill him. David found him, sent and got him, brought him to the king's palace. When the boy seen him, he fell on his face. He bowed down before the king. You got to bow before the king. And he said, I ain't nothing but a dog. He knew David was going to kill him. Because of the hatred, the bitterness, the resentment of his granddaddy. It was his granddaddy. Same reason the prime, the ex-prime minister got killed because of something his granddaddy did. Way back then. But David said, fear not. Boy, I ain't going to kill you. I'm going to show you some kindness for your daddy's sake. 
And not only that, all the land of your granddaddy, the one that tried to kill me, over and over again. And you can come in here and eat continually at the king's table. David let it go. He let it go. And even when Saul tried to kill him, David never, you'll never find in the text where David ever called him his enemy. Never did. I ain't going to even touch that man. I will not touch God's anointed one. He learned to let it go. Even after Saul tried to kill him, he let it go. Even when Saul died, and you would have thought that David would have been happy about that. Sometimes we're so happy, we we so bitter, we so angry when bad things happen to folk we don't like, we get happy about it. And the first thing we had, I knew something was gonna happen. Look at what happened to him. That'll show him. We rejoice, but you better be careful. You better be careful. You better be careful. Rejoicing. You so angry and you so bitter, you rejoicing at the downfall of other folk. You better be careful about that. The only thing I can tell you what goes around, it's coming, it's coming around. You happy. Things happen to other folk. You resent them so much. You so you got so much bitter and jealousy in your heart. You find it in your homes. Something happened to to the spouse. I told you all alone. You shouldn't have did it. And Nate, you got to be ordained. <laughs> David had been returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites. He had been in zigzag where he had learned to encourage himself. Saul had been killed. And there came some men to David. And they began to be boisterous, saying what they did. We killed him. We killed him. We took the crown off of Saul's head. We took the bracelet off of him. They was happy. They thought David was going to be happy. David, we know you happy. About a man who's been trying to kill you. We took the crown. We took the bracelet off and said, here it is, David. The downfall of other folk. The downfall of other folk. And David said to the young man, who are you, boy? Who, who are you? You bringing this to me? You celebrating at the downfall of somebody else? Because you thought I was bitter, you thought I was angry, you thought I was mad. You think I'm going to rejoice with you? And you got to be in a position where folk won't bring you all that kind of stuff in a way. You got to be in a position where folk won't bring you that kind of garbage and think you're going to rejoice with them with, about anything. The down, I don't want you bringing me no anything. I ain't no garbage king. I don't want all that. I don't want it. I don't even want to hear, you know, because I don't want you to think I'm that kind of person. I'm not like that. I don't, I don't want to hear, you know. I don't, I don't want to hear. I'm not happy about the downfall of the things that happen to other people. If I can't help you, I ain't going to hurt you. I bet you that. 
If I can't help you, I ain't, I'm not going to hurt you. So that ain't going to make me happy. Because you bitter and angry at somebody and you want me to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. David said to him, when you afraid, you ought to be afraid. When you afraid, you didn't cut the man. Tell me you took his crown off and you didn't kill him. You took his uh, bracelet and his head. Aren't you, aren't you afraid you kill the man of God? Huh? The man who the Lord then anointed? If you wasn't, you should have been. When you are so bitter and angry at other folks, and you rejoicing, why? When something bad happens, why are you doing it? If you do, you ought to be ashamed that you even feel that way. Something is wrong if you feel that way. I actually feel sorry for folks who done did me wrong. I feel sorry for them. I don't, I'm not mad at them. I feel sorry for them. I actually feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for them. They can get by me, but they can't get by him. See? Yeah, so I ain't worried about it. So I actually feel sorry for them. David said, why ain't you afraid, boy, what you did? Let this stuff go. And what David did, he killed him. He had the man killed. He had him killed. Let it go. Clear your conscience. Clear your conscience. Boy, your conscience will whoop you to death when you done did somebody wrong. Let it go. Free your conscience. What did Paul say? Sometimes you got to forget that thing that's behind you. You got to forget the, all that stuff behind you. Let it go. And you got to reach for. You can never go forward walking backwards. I, I, ain't, I ain't seen a lot of things in my life. I ain't seen a lot of things in my life. And I've been a lot of places. But I ain't never seen you better to, to walk with it. I ain't never seen you better to walk backwards and still walk forward at the same time. Some of this stuff we need to forget about. Forget about the past. Reach for the mark. You never gonna grow spiritually. You never will. If you won't let it go. Forget the past. The boy who killed the prime minister couldn't forget the past. He had been plotting and planning. And the granddad had been way dead and gone. And this boy probably didn't even know the granddad. Just for some somebody done told him. But you got to press toward the mark for the high calling, which is in Christ. This is in Christ Jesus. Bitterness is going to affect you in so many ways. So many ways. It affect you physically, emotionally, mentally, and psychologically. Physically, it'll break you down. It'll break you down. Everybody won't start. Everybody won't look young. As long as you can. Most folks do. Even if you old, you want to look young. Even if you're old, you try to act like you're young. <laughs> you might
Right now I can skip, but you do a half skip. <laughs> Y'all remember a song? I don't know. I don't know. You probably have to be over 50 to remember. Skip to the, skip to the loop, my days. Oh, my darling. Oh, oh, skip to the loop, my darling. I thought it was my days. <laughs> Somebody remember, y'all remember that? Yeah. You do? How did it go? Now, now my daughter Whitney probably don't remember that. You too young for that Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> Her and Charmaine don't remember nothing like that. <laughs> Skip to the loo. My darling. You don't hardly hear those songs no more. Huh? Nah, yeah. Been a long time. Been a long time since I heard that song. A lot of water that went over the dam. <laughs> And I think when you used to do that, some of the little girls used to skip. Yeah. Girl in the boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it'll break you down physically. It breaks you down emotionally. Yeah. Emotionally, bitterness. Physically, Emotionally, it messes your mind. And your mind's a terrible thing to lose. Head gain, your mind, you start having a head gain. You, you get paranoid mentally. Is it worth that? Something that's breaking you down physically, emotionally, mentally, and psychologically? You can't sleep. You're losing weight. You can't eat. You go to the doctor. We go to the doctor. He put on all. He give you a pill to make you go to sleep. He give you nothing to wake you up. Yeah. He give you one to pick you up. He give you nothing to put you back down. All because you don't want to forgive. Some of it because you don't want to forgive. And it's been taking its toll on you. Little by little. Physically, emotionally, mentally. You'll be surprised the amount of people on medication, blood pressure, you stressed out, heart attack, stroke. You won't let it go. You won't let it go. You won't let it go. Because it causes stress. Bitterness causes stress. And stress ain't good for you. Stress will take you out of here. Stress will take you out of here. Or if you have a stroke, it compromises your, your, your way of living. Is, that, is it worth all that because you don't want to forgive nobody? You got that much bitterness? Can't sleep, won't sleep, can't eat, won't eat, losing all kind of weight because you don't want to forgive. Can't do it. It was shorten bitterness, resentment, anger will shorten your lifespan. You shorten your lifespan. And I know one thing, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And I hope that when I do depart from these mundane shows, I'll meet y'all on the other show. But I ain't in no hurry. I ain't, I ain't no hurry. I'm not, I'm not rushing it. I, I know what folks used to holler in the old church. I got my bags packed. I don't have no bags. I, don't, I, don't, I ain't packed up. And I, I told y'all this many days, the Lord know my heart. He know when all of us going to go. 
But I hope my name is on the last page, <laughs> in the last book, at the very bottom, in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, I ain't. No. Mm -mm. Let's go, family. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I, I, I told y'all this. I got to tell it again. I said it many times. I went to a church right here in this city, and a, a big funeral there, and the preacher was got emotional and said, how all oh, y'all, how many of y'all ready to go to heaven where she at? How many of y'all? Boy, them folks were just jumping up. I just went on down. <laughs> no. <laughs> I ain't that emotional. <laughs> well, I ain't that emotional now. <laughs> In fact, I'm looking all around the way y'all. <laughs> it was showing your life, fam. It robs you of your joy. We won't get out of here. We won't. We got another couple of weeks. We won't get out of here so they can get ready to practice. But it robs your joy, and that's all your happiness. It affects you emotionally, it affects you spiritually, psychologically. It shortens your lifespan, it causes stress. And stress will get you out of here. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. You got to let it go. Turn it over to the Lord and then just really leave it. If the Lord can't fix it, then nobody, nobody. We'll continue again on next week. Come on, go ahead. Come on, to the bell. Who, 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 who do the phone? Alex, come on, Alex. Y'all get it right up there this time. No delays. Put it on cue. To the bell, I'm going to cut your check, you and Anthony. We'll continue next week as we continue our series on, on bitterness. Yeah. Yeah.
like that. <laughs> One more time. Yeah, see, some of y'all out of breath, ain't you? Yeah. Some of y'all were glad to sit down, weren't you? Saying they were getting down. <laughs> Boy, that girl, that girl sucking that song. One more time, Alex. Y'all, y'all, y'all noticed a while ago when I told, I told Anthony and I told Tudor Bill, I said, now I want y'all to get it right. I don't want no delays. Do I'm going to cut your check? They got it, didn't they? <laughs> 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 I appreciate them all up there. They, they good sport. They can take a good joke. Again, thank all you all for coming. Anyone here tonight that want to give their life to Christ? Anyone here tonight want to give their life to Christ? This is your opportunity. Anyone here looking for a church home? Anybody looking for a church home tonight? What a wonderful, wonderful crowd we have here tonight. Uh, been a rainy evening here in Tuscaloosa. Well, we got a lot of people here in our sanctuary. Thank all of you. Been, who are watching us from home tonight, thank you so much. Again, I know a lot of you are staying for choir rehearsal again. And for those who are here, if you still like to join the choir, again, you can see Jennifer just remain here uh, in, the, in the sanctuary for our comeback, our comeback choir. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day and all that many blessings for those who came tonight, Lord, and as we all deal with the thing from time to time that we call bitterness. Now bless them as they leave this place but never out of that presence. We thank you for our choir. We thank you for the choir members and, Lord, that those who will be singing praises and glory, hallelujah, unto the Lord. Keep all of us in that care. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And let the church say amen. 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 Thank you all.